get close to where you want, wrap it about five times or six, and that's enough. Wrap it over, and then you can pull all your slack out. Get it as tight as you want it. Put it back on itself. I'll stay there until the cows come home. All right, welcome back, everybody. If you're wondering what me and Brantley are out here doing, we are laying out for our piers, for our post, for a lean-to shed that we're gonna put on the back of this garage. I'm gonna put a 14-foot lean-to with a two-foot overhang. And so I have, if you've not been here before, our porch posts are six by six steel tubing. And so for the front porch and side porch, I just put eighth-inch wall. But for these three posts, I'm doing quarter inch wall. But I didn't want, like this building, you got post, 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 and all those posts get in your way. So what I've done is I have four 14 inch LVLs that I'll use for a header. So I'll have post on the end, post in the middle, one on the end. That way we got unobstructed access to get inside the shed so all we're doing here is laying out where the outside edge of our post will be and then we'll measure off where our piers need to be we'll have to drill holes and then box these up i'm putting the top of my piers level with the floor of the garage and then we'll come back in backfill this with rock once everything's done so they're going to be sticking up a little bit here in the meantime but we'll backfill everything in here and bring them up to ground level. But I want to keep this as high as I can because I want to be able to pull that inside here. All right, lay your string against the wall. Now watch my line when I get to the edge, when I just get ready to touch. Is that about it? Yeah. Okay, go the other end, mark it, and then that way we've got something to measure off all for a setback. Touch it. Touching it. Well, it's a lovely day today. It's about 35 and the wind's blowing. Makes for just a pleasurable experience out here working today. But I've got my templates for my post. So what I'm trying to do is lay out my piers. That way I can take everything out and drill my holes and build me essentially a footer for them to where I can go back and anchor them once I get them. But I've got everything laid out. I'm gonna put a one foot overhang on this shed on the sides and then the front. It's, I've got a two foot on the house, but I didn't want a two foot overhang. So I wanna keep as much room coming in the front of this sort of back side of this shed as I can for my post spacing. So I'm gonna put a 12 inch overhang on it. I just think buildings with overhangs look better. So it's the reason I'm doing it. It'll be more trim work, more soffit work, but I think it'll look better in the end. But I've got my dimension, my width, of the overall shed and then I've or the garage and then I've offset it two foot in for a 12 foot 12 inch overhang and then a, I want it to set back on the building 12 inches I just don't like that roof line going out beyond the corner so I've got my marks I'm gonna halfway get them squared up I'll paint my lines and then I'll lay out my footer well that paint works great The only reason I'm being a little anal about setting these things up pretty accurate is I hate to see a concrete pier and then a post mounted to it. And then you got this much edge on this side and then this much on the other side. I just want to see it when it sets on that concrete pier when it's done. I want it to be setting somewhat in the middle so it looks halfway decent because I'll leave it sticking up a little bit. That way I won't have to look at it every time I come by it. Thank <laughs> you. 
what I'm doing with these forms is this is my template for my mounting plate so it will lay in there something along those lines and so what I've got went ahead and done is I've laid out where my post will be there's my center same goes over here so when I was laying that square across here I've got a mark on my string there that is the center of where my post will be so I centered it up with my form and then my offset post will set back two inches on the flange so I'm lined up underneath my string there so I've got that measurement here so I am lined up with my form so I'm gonna try to take the post hole diggers on the tractor and with these in place come in here and drill a hole in the center of these and then I'll cut these down now those are a little big and they're sticking up a little bit but I'll add some 45 material in here to chamfer that corner that way you don't knock a tire down on it that's the reason I'm being so particular with it because versus me having to do all this measuring layout and then take my string lines down pour these and then have to come back and recalculate it all I don't want to have to do that so if I can keep removing these all I should have to do is this line across my form will be the back side of the post and then this line will be the center of my post in which I can lay my post right in here so when I get my concrete poured and my post come I should be able to reference off the marks on these forms and screw them down well the thinking's over with now the wrestling match begins I'm trying to hook that stupid thing up well Brentley and I decided to bring the new year in out in the woods get away from all the ruckus and all those balls dropping sure beats digging a ditch don't it Brentley yep there's her home away from home tonight. I think it's supposed to get down to 30. So be a little cold on them toes in the morning. Well, happy new year. We survived. Thanks to that little heater. We run it on low, so it kept it plenty comfortable in here. About breakfast time, ain't it, Brantley? Well, me and Brantley may not get an A for presentation, but they taste pretty good, don't they? Yep. It's hard to beat good campfire food. one thing that I can't figure out is when you're walking into a new house and concrete's been poured obviously there's gonna be mud around a new construction house but in most cases there'll be a little strip of gravel that'll get you up there to keep mud getting on your shoes but why people decide to walk through the mud to go on the concrete versus walking another 10 feet this way and following the little gravel path up to the concrete got me Well, maybe this will prevent a little bit of mud from getting on the concrete, but I about guarantee you they'll take a shortcut and come right through here. By well, golly, it's a big day here at the Good Luck Trying House. Brantley is now tall enough to push that clutch in without killing the tractor coming up out of the seat. 
I've been waiting for this day. If he runs through the trust pile here. <laughs> he he's on the verge. He just ain't hardly tall enough without killing it. But hey, we're over the hump. Brantley, now that you can push the clutch in without killing the tractor, you're the new official tractor driver around here. Right. Now let's see if we can hook this devilish thing up. You got it out of gear over there? Yeah. Foot off the clutch? Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. 